Alright guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon Battle Series, The School of Hard Knocks. So throughout this episode, like every other, we'll be jumping on to the Pokemon Global Link Battle Spot Ladder, playing under the Championship Battle Rules, which is the equivalent rule set of the VGC 2018 season. So, as I explained on Monday, this week, next week, I am away on holiday, but I didn't want to leave the, the channel contentless, so we've done some pre-recording so to make sure that we're having some content while I'm away and uh, I'm picking like Pokemon that are kind of like my favorites and building semi-competitive teams around them. We had some good games on Monday. We bumped into like probably two of the, the hardest matchups for Mega Mawa, which is the team that we're playing at the moment, um, which was Mega Charizard Y. Uh, we managed to kind of win one, we lost one. So we're one and one at the moment. Hopefully we can kind of improve on that today. One of the things I've been looking at with this team is, like, if we can integrate Mega Tyranitar into this team. And, lo and behold, we have another Mega Charizard Y. Or you would assume it's Mega Charizard Y. Probably a pledge team as well, so not going to be the easiest to deal with, but we know what we have to do. We've got Charizard Y, I'm presuming. We could be totally wrong here. But Charizard, Landris Theory, Nihiligo, Bishop, Sceptile, and Primarina. So... We're probably looking at maybe a dual mega team with the, the mega septile being a mega as well although probably not i'd say it's probably the mega charizard y and um, with that pledge combination with the two other starter pokemon in the the septile per marina we've got the bishop there that's going to put off our landorus thus bringing that to the game has access to stuff like knockoff and things like that it can be a little bit problematic um, especially as we have double intimidate on our team and um, I think the whole premise of what we want to try and do is get our trick room set up and then just start kind of tackling the team with with Araquanid and uh, Mawile I think we probably do need to bring our Landorus though as well um, hmm because it's scarfed could we get away with maybe a helping hand oh, it's going to be really difficult really tricky this this game um, I want to bring Landorus up front. I think I have to, um, and probably Latias. Let's bring P2 and Mawile. That's what we're going to bring. Probably would have been better off with Araquanid, but <clears throat> I guess bringing a Mega is always going to be a, a thing. And basically, what I want to try and do here is, if we see that Bishop, we've got the the helping hand that we can utilize with with Latias. Bishop Charizard is going to be very tricky, but we'll see what my opponent goes with. Okay, Bishop Sceptile. Hmm. Huh, at least we're not intimidated, so we could potentially go Earthquake, Icy Wind. It'll break the Sash on the Bishop. Huh. We could go super power into the bishop. The earthquake's probably a little bit better. Oh, this could be so dodgy. Because, like, a sucker punch here from bishop would probably take down um, Landorus. But you've got to imagine the sucker punch probably going into our Landorus rather than. But we should take a plus one sucker punch. But the bishop might protect here. You might see the bishop. Just protect. And the Sceptile go for a hidden part ice. Which wouldn't be ideal. We'll see. And this is another reason why Tito would be like a good shout for this team because it, you know, especially if we've got like law kick on it or something like that, it does give us a bit of an advantage against Bishop. Bishop just protecting like we kind of thought it might Dragon Pulse. Okay. Does that speed our Landorus as well? We do take that though. So we get the earthquake. Nice wind. I wonder if it'll kill the septile. So Bishop protecting on the icy wind is a good thing. You don't want to boost it anymore. And Icy Wind is enough to take down the Sceptile, which is great. Okay. But we are locked into Earthquake. Hmm. 
Landorus coming in. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go Earthquake again. But I think this time around I'm going to go Recover with Latias. Because I can imagine the Bishop probably wanting to get rid of the Latias because it threatens the Landorus. No, we're not going to actually see. Sucker Punch. Might just see a knockoff come out from that Bishop. Unless it's not scarfed. Okay, yeah, sashed, sorry. Oh, but it, it takes it. Ah, ah. Okay, so there's a U turn. Scarfed. <coughs> Landorus. <coughs> Takes on that, yes, and a knockoff probably coming out. Hmm. Oh, if we lose, if we lose, if we lose Landorus here, things get super difficult for us. Primarina coming out. Yeah, knockoff. Would have been better with the helping hand earthquake. Hmm. Reveals life orb as well. Okay, things are going to go downhill pretty quickly for us because we've got the more wild to bring in. We're going to further boost that bishop. But I think we can get the trick room up. Like if we take a knock off, you would hope. We should be able to get a trick room up. Hmm. Mega Evolve Protect. Or do I attack? Do I Mega Evolve and attack? Because I feel like my opponent will just attack straight into the P2. So it could give us the opportunity to get a Fire Fang into the Bishop, get rid of it, and get a Trick Room up with P2. Let's see. So you've got to imagine the Bishop probably wants to either go for an Iron Head into the Mawile, which wouldn't be ideal for us or a knock off like it's going for into Polygon 2 but we do manage just to take it oh my god and a moon blast that's going to be too much though and then it's more wild versus the world ah hmm We don't even have Sucker Punch, so we're... It is Scarfed Landorus, though. There's every chance, you know, we can just protect and see what it locks itself into. But I don't think we can come back from this. Unless the Primarina is Specs as well and it's locked itself into Moonblast. But I very much doubt it. Oh, it's Tech Rage, so it's not even Scarfed Landorus. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and there's the earthquake and hyper voice. Yeah. So this is this is game over for us. Completely not the best of starts. <sighs> Lander is protecting, so we'll get at least some damage off onto this Primarina, I'd imagine. See the Hyper Voice come off, but it's gonna plan that liquidation. Liquid Voice, I should say. Hmm. Ah, oh, that is disappointing. Okay. Like. From the start, though, that was just wrong because, like, we I think we identify right there that we've got a bit of a bishop issue with the team. Um, we didn't make it any better by leading in with the, the Landorus, of course, but um, we haven't got any any real ways to kind of approach dealing with it. I mean, Tapu Koko might have been an option there with the the Dazzling Gleam, and probably that would have been the better option there. Um, Let's go Cyrus with our next music. Um, yeah, so Tapu Koko probably and P2 would have been out probably. Or maybe a Rackwinid. 
Hmm. Well, P2 Iraq won it from the start. Just try and get the trick room up and then just plow through the team from there. We'll see if we can improve on this because we've got our next opponent. And hopefully we might get three games in today. I feel like I wanted to try and kind of build on this. So we've got Salamence, Tapu Koko, Ega Slash, <coughs> Tapu Fini, Tyranitar and Amoongus. So the Amoongus is going to be a bit of a problem if we get the Trick Room up. But we can deal with that with Electric Terrain and Misty Terrain respectively. Our opponent's got Double Tapu as well to try and better control the field. Tyranitar, Aegislash and Salamence all really don't like Mawile. Um, we've got P2 that can deal with Salamence as well pretty nicely and the, the Tapu Fini. Um, okay. So where do we want to go with this? I think we do lead P2 here. Maybe Landorus. Just for the Intimidate it will be quite nice. The only problem is if we we, we allow the, the Aegislash to potentially get a substitute up, um, which wouldn't be ideal. But I think we want more while and we probably want a rack win it as well. But then we're relying on them bringing one of their Tapus, which I would imagine they would. You've got to imagine they'll bring a Tapu. Just that Amoongus' spores, if we get the trick room up, will be a bit of a problem. Especially if there's not a Tapu on the field. Okay, so Tapu Coco Aegis Slash, that's fine. I mean. And we lead Lando and P2. with our P2 which isn't ideal um, I think we got Trick Room and let's you turn out into hmm into Coco or Aegis Slash I don't really want to be stuck in I'm going to go with the Coco Coco is more likely to switch out here No switches though. We could possibly see a taunt come out from this uh, type of Coco as well. That could be an option that we could see right now. Um, do we want to bring in Mawile? It's likely that we take a Shadow Ball into this Mawile slot as well. That's the, the other thing. Uh, unless we see a substitute from the Aegis Lash. Hmm. And do we got a Raquinid or Mawile? Guess we've got the yeah. Let's go Iraq on it right now because we've got the Z move on it. I don't want to preserve more for later in the game. We do see a Vault switch into the P two. I feel like we see a sub, but I wouldn't be surprised if we just see a Shadow Ball. Into a rack when it is well. Tap of Finny gonna come in. Okay. We'll change the terrain. And a Z move coming out from this. <clears throat> Aegis Lash. It's gonna be into the Landra slot. Hmm. So there's every chance we lose crack on it here. Maybe not though. Maybe we take it. Just. Yeah, we do. Okay. We get the trick room up. Now the question is, do we go for the the? Um, I feel like the Aegislash slash probably protects here, but there's every chance it doesn't protect. So we could potentially go for a T ball into the Finny, and then the Waterium into. The Aegis Slash. But the Aegis Slash probably wants to protect here. And I kind of want to 
go for Bug Bite into the Finny to try and steal a berry. But my opponent must know that, right? So they may not protect the Aegislash. What would I do if I was in, if I was in this situation? I protect the Aegislash and I think I'd attack with Finny. So I think I'm going to go for the Bug Bite. Aegislash withdraws. I'm going to see Salamence come in. <clears throat> Get that in a ten minute. Now the Finny might protect here. Not protect. So we should hopefully steal a berry. Which will be... No, no, berry. It's not berry. Okay. We do get a Thunderbolt off. Muddy water. So it's more than likely Specs Finny. Yeah, so we lose a rack when it, unfortunately. Okay. Let's bring in more wow. Bring in our boy. We do have to be a bit worried that like the Salamence could potentially have um, a fire type attack, but at the same time, like let's look at the team. Hmm. It's feasible definitely feasible that they have a fire type attack I feel like I want to double in on the finny slot because I know that it's probably specs so um, not having a berry it could be a Z move as well that's the thing hmm iron head t-bolt should take it down though let's go for that Moal should take an attack from Salamence finny's actually gonna withdraw we're gonna see Aegislash come back out Salamence. I wonder if Salamence just protects here. Yeah, Salamence just protecting. But it does mean we got a free shot into that slot the next turn. That does not bad damage at all, really. Firefang might even get it from that range because we can Ice Beam. The mens. Oh, we could actually double the Aegis Slash, to be honest. Yeah, let's double the Aegis Slash. Fire Fang. Because it's likely to attack. Salamence are likely to switch, I would imagine, to Finny. Yeah. And Coco coming back in. So we have doubled in on the Aegis Slash. We should underspeed it with both as well. It doesn't, yeah, no protect. So, there's a Fire Fang. Is that enough? It is actually enough to take the, the Aegis Slash down, which is great. Okay. T Ball into the Core Core, gonna be resisted, but at least we'll get some damage onto it. The Salamence gonna come back in and um, gonna be able to get an Intimidate off. Hmm. I wonder if we chase down the Salamence here, or chase down the Core Core. We're in our last turn of Trick Room, right? I feel like my opponent probably just double protects here. But I'm gonna go for, hmm, I'll go play rough. We've got a better chance. If the Coco doesn't protect, then we go for Iron Head. We might get a flinch if it doesn't protect here. Yeah. And we'll just recover with... Yeah, Salamence going to protect. Does Coco... No, I'll protect on Coco. We do get the Iron Head off. Do we get the flinch, though? Nature's Madness. Okay. Into P2. Yeah. Okay, gonna take us down to about half health. <sighs> okay, we can go for a trick room. Mm. And I'm gonna go for a play rough into the Salamence. Because I feel like my opponent chases down the P2 here to stop the trick room. So I'll protect the Moel here isn't a bad call, but I mean, if they don't double the P2, then. Um, 
we get the trick room up. And then P2 can kind of win this game out, really. I'm going to see the, the Salamence Mega Evolve. There's a Sky Drop into the P2. Wow, okay, that's cool. Double Edge. Unfortunately for my opponent, it doesn't kind of pay off. We get the player up into the Salamence. Do take it down. We're just left with the core call. And the Tapu Finny coming in now. Hmm. Let's go Trick Room. And I'm kind of a little bit worried that this this Finny has got the Waltarium. Um I might not go for the Trick Room actually. I might just go for a recover with P2 and um, fire off an Iron Head into the Finny. Because I'm not worried about the Coco right now. I've got Landorus scarfed in the back. So as long as we can get some damage onto this Finny, then we should be able to deal with it fine. Just going to see Muddy Water. P2 avoids. It's more than likely Specs as we kind of expected thought at the start. Yeah, it's good damage. We get the recover with P2. <clears throat> and an Iron Head. I don't know if it'll take the the Finny down, but it's very close. Now we can go for the Trick Room. Um, hmm. Yeah, everything like Landorus comes in now, and uh, actually I don't even need to Trick Room. I'm just going to go for a T-Bolt into the Finny. And I'm going to go for an Iron Head into the Tapu Koko because once we get Landorus in, we don't want the Trick Room up and we just want to be able to Earthquake. So we're going to see a Nature's Madness come out from the Tapu Koko. Take the Porygon 2 down to half health again. Morwell avoids the Muddy Water. P2 doesn't. <clears throat> Morwell would have taken the Muddy Water from this range anyway. He would have needed a critical hit. Ah, uh, we go for the... Um, the Thunderbolt, but Tapu Finny misses it. Okay, and yeah, we can just wrap this up now. I just got T-Bolt and Iron Head. As long as we don't get, um, like P2 will probably go down here, but Moal should take it, like we said before. <coughs> Ooh, both take. P2, gonna wrap it up. Done a really good job this game, and good game to my opponent. So we managed to to sneak in there. Should we do one more? We're 23 minutes. It's risky territory, where we could go completely over, or we could be all right. Hmm. Let's go one more. Like I said before, disappointing about game one. So I feel like we go for we go for a makeup couple of games. So, let's do this. Right. Let's hope we don't have any char Y coming up. And also, guys, I am repping, if you haven't seen already, this lovely Flinch Life t-shirt that you can get yourselves a copy of. The link to the Flinch Life and the, the Flinch clothing t-shirts and stuff like that if you want to rep them at events and things like that to give you all the power in the world when you're playing in tournaments. Um, you can go and check them out at the link below um, and you can purchase yourself a t-shirt. Like I've been saying in the past few weeks, working on new designs so we'll have those coming out soon and uh, we'll probably do some more giveaways as well with just the new designs so um, do stay tuned to that. But let me know what your thoughts are if you've not seen them before. They're pretty nice. We've got the rocks and the flinch and the life. But more importantly, we've got our next opponent. Running a really cool team actually with Salamence, Mama Swine, Buzzwall, Gengar, uh, Mushurana and Galissapod. So, hmm, what's going on here? What is going on here? We've got the Salamence, it's probably going to provide Tailwind support for things like Mama Swine, Buzzwall. We've got a Trick Room mode as well, so they can both work in that. We've got Gengar, could be double Mega Team. Hmm, and Galissapod as well. It's going to be the Trick Room abuser. Man, oh man, what is going on? 
Okay. Um, P2 is going to be good. We've got to be a bit, bit careful of that, that buzz wall, though. Um, I think I might go with what we went with last game. P2, Landorus. Um, hmm. Don't know if I want to bring Korko here. It's really good against the Glisspod. Um, Mowal's still not bad. Araquanids. Araquanids not bad as well here with the Z move. P2 deals with the Salamence. If we can get the Trick Room up. We have double. We have double Intimidate as well, which is nice. So we can work with that. We'll go with this. We'll see. But I am looking super forward to seeing how this team operates. Right, so third game of the day. We're on a timer. We've got four minutes to hit that 30 minute mark. Can we make it a quick one? Let's hope we can. But if not, then it doesn't matter, does it? So we're going to lead off P2, Landers Theory and Form. Mammoth Swine Buzzwall coming out. Okay, so my opponent totally can't leave this here. Buzzwall gonna threaten uh, P2. Mammoth Swine threatens uh, Landorus. Hmm. We get the download boost in special attack. But the problem is, do we actually want to stay in? Um, I mean, we could Trick Room. And we could switch out Landorus into Mowal. It probably puts the Buzzwall on minus two. If it's got the Phytium, we should survive for minus two and get the Trick Room up. So, yeah, let's do that. And then imagine an Ice type attack into that Lander slot from the Mammoth Swine. <clears throat> Maybe not, though. Maybe you see Earthquake. Because Buzzwall does resist it. So, you know, if my opponent thinks that I'm going to switch this Lander out into something like the Mawile. Well, we'd probably be better off going into a Raccoon, but we need that double Intimidate if we want to try and get the Trick Room up right now. So, let's see. Another Intimidate coming off to neuter both of these physical type attackers. We see a Rock Slide come out from Mama Swan. So, let's hope that P2 doesn't get flinched. Do minimal damage to both of our top, uh, Pokemon Superbar. Take this easy. Now does P2 get the Trick Room off? I feel like it will. Ah, oh, does not. Does not. Hmm. We know it's Scarf Ma Well, it might not be Scarf Man, this one. Hmm. Okay. I feel like we just see the same again, really, don't we? So we can switch out P2 into a Rack Winnid. And we could Mega Evolve, or we could just Protect, Protect more. yeah. And save P2 for later. P2 is going to be too important to kind of just let go down so easily right now. The Rock Slide's not going to be great if the Mama Swine goes for it again. And if it does, you kind of indicate that it is maybe Scarfed, and it is going for it again. I reckon when it takes it pretty pretty comfortably. And there's another superpower. Okay. So we're alright at the minute. And we could potentially go donk donk with play rough into the buzzwall, Voltarium into the Mammoth Swan. But what is there that comes in and resists that? Uh, I guess we got huh. I mean we could go vice versa. We could go Voltarium into the Buzzwall. And we could go Iron Head into the Mama Swan. Hmm. But I feel like I want to go... I want to play it more straight. I want to go there and I want to go play rough, Mega Evolve, play rough into the Buzz Wall. So let's do that. Hmm. Mama Swan withdrawing makes a lot of sense. Galissapod coming in. Yeah, I mean, even if we went Iron Head in that slot, we kind of... It's, it's covered from both sides, isn't it? And Gengar coming in on the other side of the field. Hmm. So we get the player off into Gengar. It's 
still does really good damage, you know. We're going to get this Waterium liquidation into <coughs> this Glissopod. And we'll see what damage we can do to it. It's not going to do great damage at all. But maybe looking at like 25%, maybe a bit more. A little bit more. That's fine. Okay. So we've got the first impression to worry about. We've got the Gengar, Shadow Ball to worry about. Um, feel like, feel like I want to pull a double switch here. Um, bring in Landorus and bring in P2 on the Mobile because I feel like Shadow Ball will probably come into that Mobile slot. But we have lost at least one Intimidate. But if we can get P2 in here into a position where we can potentially get a Trick Room set up, it makes the game so much easier for us. Download and Special Attack again, which is really good. Rackwind coming back. We're going to get the Landorus in. Get them all important Intimidate off into this Galissapod, which has sky high attack already. Let's see if it actually goes for that first impression. No, it's just protecting. Okay. Hmm. Gengar going for Destiny Bond. Hmm. That's interesting. I think we've got Trick Room and we probably got Rock Slide because we'll force something in. And if the Gengar stays in and goes Destiny Bond, we take that down, we take Alanderus down, and we also get the Galissapod out of here, and then P2 is free just to get a, a Trick Room up, which is quite nice. And like I say, if we can get the Trick Room up, it makes things so much easier for us. We get the Mawile back in, get the Araquanid back in. Glissapod not going to stay in. Mamoswine coming back in. And if the Gengar protects here. Oh, Gengar avoids! That's the one thing we didn't want it to. Oh. The Sludge Bomb coming out. We should take it with P2. Yeah, we do. Hmm. Oh. We needed that rock slide to hit. Oh, that is annoying. Um, I wonder if we just sack Landorus, to be honest. Go for a rock slide and we just recover with P2. Hmm. The one time we need the rock slide to hit to take the Gengar down and the Landorus down to give us that free switch in so we can really utilize our trick room turns. Just doesn't happen. Never mind. Okay. But we'll recover P2 here. We'll try and sack the Landorus. We shouldn't be in too much danger. I don't think the Mamoswine would want to lock into something like Super Power here. We're going to see the Destiny Bond come out again. So maybe we get the, the KO here with, with Landorus. Icicle Crash. No. Gonna KO Landorus. So it means we get that free switch into Araquanid. I think Araquanid's probably the best the best one. Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe more while. Hmm. It's just we can't touch the Gengar the next turn. Mowile should take a Shadow Ball. Just we can Iron Head and T Bolt the Mama Swine. To cover any switching. Yeah. Let's do that. And T Bolt, just in case that Glissopod comes in. But if the Glissopod comes in, we activate the. Hmm. We could just go for a recover as well, but hmm, we could go for an ice beam as well, which might be a little bit better. It's just if the Glissopod comes in, uh, what do we do? I mean, the Glissopod comes in, it is going straight back out. So we're probably better just ice beaming. Because if the Buzzwall or the Mamoswine come back in, we want to get some damage onto it, yeah. So there's the Mamoswine going out. 
Glissopod coming in. Now we will prop that emergency exit ability on it for sure. Yeah. And this is the reason why the T-Bolt here wouldn't have been as strong. And I wonder if the Gengar just carries on going for the Destiny Bond or if it attacks now. Buzzwall coming in, so yeah. Okay. The Ice Beam was the better shout overall. Wow, doing great damage. Shadow Ball coming out from the Gengar. So we can get rid of that this next turn with our P2 and go for a play rough into the Buzzwall. And go for um, what's going to be better. Glissopod's not going to come back in, I don't think. So let's just Ice Beam the Gengar. And I think after this, we've got one turn of Trick Room left. I'm pretty sure. Buzzwall's just protecting, which is fine. Should get rid of the Gengar now. Gengar just protecting as well. Okay. Do we? Is this the last turn? It is the last turn of Trick Room. Play rough into Buzzwall and yeah, Ice Beam into Gengar. <sighs> we need to get rid of the Buzzwall because the thing is my opponent probably wants to switch the Buzzwall out here. But whatever comes in is gonna take yeah. It's to kind of check the P2. Yeah, the Galissapod's kind of easy to kind of sacrifice here over the other two. Okay. Because then they've got to check for at least Porygon 2 now where they can't get, we can't get the Trick Room up the next turn. Hmm. Okay, so Buzzwell's going to come back in. I think we maybe scout this turn, to be honest. Like, I want to scout out what the Mammoth Swan's going to do. I'm going to protect more while. And I'm going to bring in Spider. Spider Man, come out and do what you can. We've got the Wide God as well. So, I mean, if that Mammoth Swan decides to lock into. Um, potentially goes for a Rock Slide, though. I mean, a, ra a Raccoonid will take a Rock Slide superpower. It's just whether or not it wants to lock into Earthquake at this point. Like, Super Part Earthquake is pretty good. Uh, especially just to deal with that more while. Um, we'll see, though. If it does, then we can we can wide guard the next turn. And we can get around this. Super get around this. Rock Slide. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense. Not damaging. Araquanid avoids and Super Power coming out. Okay, this working really well in our favor. Okay. We maybe take a superpower with more while now. Maybe. Because um, we could just fire Fang rather go on for a miss with Buzzwall. And we can wide guard with a Raquinid. It's all about more while now. Does it take the superpower? Mm, it's going to be super class if it does. Rock Slide. We take it, we take it, yes! And we can win! As long as this Firefang, it should take this Buzzwall out. Didn't want to risk the play rough. Awesome, Firefang taking it down and we can just iron head our way to victory. Which is great. Getting far too excited about this. Um, but this team is like seriously good. Like I really enjoyed playing this. It's nice seeing like stuff that you don't commonly see very much, you know, like Mama Swine, Buzzwall and stuff like that. And my opponent just forfeits because knowing that we've got the wide guard to lock out that scoff rock slide and we can just deal with it with, with more. Well. So after a really disappointing first game where we just kind of were just fumbling around, we kind of managed to get two really solid games and bring it back and uh, finish with two wins, one loss. So that puts us at... Three wins, two losses. So we're up on loss. 
win loss this week with this team and i feel like friday we'll be back obviously guys we haven't got any streams this week because as i said i am away on holiday if you want to follow my holiday escapades they're over in california um do follow me on twitter it is osiris at vgc so you can follow me over there we'll be tweeting pictures and all sorts of stuff when i'm away and i'll also be keeping an eye on the comments as and when i can so do leave your comments i'd love to hear your thoughts on the team and things like that leave a like on the video it does really help the the channel um and subscribe if you're not already to stay up to date with all of our content that we have coming out um but yeah there'll be no streams this week next week sadly um unfortunately i am already looking forward to getting back and doing streams with you guys over on our twitch channel um so we'll be back on friday finishing up with this mobile team got another team lined up for next week really exciting in and um yeah we'll wrap things up we're on 40 minutes oh my god we went way over time limit but i hope you guys have enjoyed it let me know if you like the longer episodes if this is a bit too long because i know i like to try and keep the around 25 to 30 minutes but we're a bit over today but we did get that extra game in so whether it was worth it or not do let me know guys because i can always adjust you know and do a little bit longer here there sometimes if we if, we, if you feel like that's something you'd like to see anyway i'm not going to keep you any longer have an amazing evening morning afternoon night whatever time of day it is where you are make sure you're taking care of yourselves guys thank you so much for tuning in as always and i will see you all very soon so until then guys take care and bye bye